Spyro is in the building. How are you doing? Cheers. I'm good. I'm so happy. <laughs> Great to, to have you on the show, bro. Same here. I feel so elated to be here yeah. finally. You know, so for you, sometimes I feel everybody talks about what's good now, right? Mm -hmm. And I know um you've not really told your whole story. You know that, right? Do yeah, you agree? Most definitely. Why yeah. are you keeping that for, for later days or are you hold do you have let me just put it this way you made it now right i mean you're growing I never make a move. oh no i mean you're growing <laughs> with your music yeah 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 do you yeah. have any pain in your heart did you ever i mean knowing that you've have gone to this point did you ever have any type of pain in your heart at some point um i mean the perspective from my hand is quite different because i believe that um i was supposed to go through that process you know, so I don't kind of like think back and say, oh, I feel this type of pain because I know that it was for all, it was all for a reason. Like I had to go through it to to grow my muscles and be who I am today. So basically, no pain, no regret. If if the song Who's Your Guy never got the, the same ovation he has now, mm -hmm. would you have quit music? No. I don't think I would. I've been doing music for, for over 13 years now, you know, not professionally, but I've been in the space for about 13 years, been rolling with Sound Sultan and even way before then. Yeah. And so if I was going to give up, I would have done that way back, you know, because things weren't juicy, things weren't easy. Like, I mean, I saw it all, but I just knew that with consistency and that God was taking me through a journey you know so that kept ringing in my head and that's one of the reasons why i kept on pushing because i knew there was a knowing that one day is going to happen what what changed your perspective about life and the journey as an entertainer you know there's something that just changed the perspective from i mean where you're from and where you are now what exactly was that one thing that changed the whole perspective for you um what changed my perspective I would say, I mean, it sounds somehow, but I would say that God, mm. I mean, everything changed when I encountered God, Yeah. you know, so I was coming from a place where I was under pressure to make it in life because yeah. my dad would say, my dad never believed that I could amount to anything, you know, and whether he meant it or not, I don't think he meant it, you know, he was just trying to, you know, pastors are usually very hard on their kids. Absolutely, yeah. You know, so... I guess it was just trying to push me to do better, but it came out wrong, you know, but coming from that place, I was just under constant pressure that can I even make it at a point I felt like, can I even make it in life? You know, but when I broke out of that, I encountered God, not even from my parents, because my father is like a general overseer of a church and all that, but I didn't encounter God while with them. So I encountered God um, with um, at Avestas, Pastor Bolaji do, yeah. and then everything just changed for me from there. Okay, so have you forgiven your dad now? Ah, <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, I don't have any issue with him. Like, we're okay. good, we're good. I, I understand now that when, I understand that when I have my own kids too, you know, I would do a lot better. I've learned from what happened to me, but I now understand that he was just trying to push me to do better. So he, he didn't know better. Yeah. You know? So what is it like for him now, seeing you... You know, because now the story always changes every single time. I mean, uh, we all have parents sometimes. When it comes to entertainment, uh, not every parent in our time wanted us to do this. Anyway, exactly. right? So was especially when your parents are ministers of God. Exactly. <laughs> I, f I felt like I feel like just as we are growing, they are also growing. Yeah. I mean, they are, they are getting to accommodate a lot of things. And um, the more you grow, the more you understand life, you know. So I feel like he's at that point. He's super happy for me. The last time I spoke with him, he's like, this your song. Like I was passing through a place and they were blasting the song and everybody. And I'm like, ah, this is my son's song. <laughs> I mean, so it, it was, I mean, the last conversation yeah. we had, he was really happy because family members from every corners of life just calling him and say ah your boy is big i mean so he's excited he's happy yeah. and then he's eating well you know so that's <laughs> <laughs> i like that part it's, you know man yeah. once the meal is good it's good yeah and then once it's balanced diet i yeah, mean well sure. good now talking about the music afrobeat is um or what we call afrobeats now mm. it's now uh it, it, it has become 
are something that is not just even about the music. It, it has now become a lifestyle for a lot of people. It almost feels like it's a philosophy. Mm. Uh, and in all the genre music that have come out, this is like the hottest that has ever that's never gone away mm -hmm. since the times of reggae and all the rest and all the mm -hmm. dance halls. Yeah. Uh, it's still there, but I mean, globally, that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, where do you find yourself in that space? It feels like most Nigerian musicians don't even want to make credit. They, they make their money out of this place, right? Mm -hmm. What is it for you and your journey moving away from just making a record for, you know, and breaking into the global scene? And for example, it could be a collaboration. Who do you see yourself working with? Um, who do I see myself working with? I feel like I'm, I'm pretty much happy with what it is right now because back then Nigerian music was not really appreciated outside, you know, Nigeria. But right now, I mean, I've been to in the in this um, in the last couple of weeks, months, I've been around Africa and. It's amazing how they can't even play f 10 musics, 10 music rather. Yeah. I mean, and it's just Nigerian music. Yeah. I mean, like it's almost yeah. like they don't play any other sound there. I agree with you. So internationally, I, I would I would love to work with the likes of Chris Brown. I would like yeah. to work with um, 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 Beyonce. I would like to work with um, Drake. Mm. You know, so... I mean, I intend to take that. My dream for myself is international. I've always been international. I want to make international music, like not make international music, but I want to be on that global scale. When did you know the song was big? What gave you the conviction? Because um, the truth is, you know, when you're trying to think, you're saying, you know, sometimes some kind of feedbacks, you just know, or you walk into the place and say, when did you get the conviction you have a hit song? Okay, I think that was... Um, in Kenya, we got to Kenya and um, I walked into a club and the scream, I'm like, for who? For me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was, <laughs> for who? It, was like, ah, ah. it was really amazing, man. It was really amazing. And then right there, I knew that, oh, this is it. Like, this song is big now. You know, this song is big. Where, I, I what remember, comes to mind every time you think about your really hot time? Yeah, so f I was signed to a label a um, couple of years back okay. I think that was 2017 okay. and um, I was signed to Upfront and Personal oh okay you know um, okay. Polo and Polo is a fantastic person but when I got signed to the label at that particular time Polo didn't have my time yeah. you know he, he, he's got his hands full he's a busy man lot. yeah he's a okay. businessman and a busy man and he's always flying here and there and I was just there stuck you know, I was there for two years and nothing was happening. I, I, had, ju I had just one record out and um, the record wasn't doing numbers. Like there was no, no form of promotion whatsoever. Okay. And I was just there. And everyone out there looking at me like, oh, you're signed to a billionaire. You should be popping. And the people that were funding me before stopped funding me because they felt like, oh, you're now signed to Polo. Okay, wow. You know, so why would I fund you? Like, Polo is even... Polo is richer than I am, you know? So, at some point, I, I would just stay back home and cry. Like, what kind of life is this? Like, I had parents at home that I had to take care of. I had responsibilities. And money wasn't coming for, from any angle. So, it was quite frustrating for me, you know? So, at the point, I just had to go talk to Polo. And it's a very, he's a very understanding person. So, I just had to have that conversation. Like, boss... I mean, I have to move. I have to move, you know. And did he agree with you when you said that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he said um, he understands that he's got his hands full and it's fine. Like, I mean, that he wishes me the best in life and that he's still going to support me. Like, we're still very chill. But that was a dark time for me, considering the fact that, I, I mean, I, I, I felt like that was it for me. You know, when I got signed, I cleared out my Instagram pictures and I'm like, ah, no, I don't arrive. Eh, Polo don't sign me. So in my head, I'm like, this is, this is, you know. This is a new uh, face for you. Yeah, exactly. Another but another terrible one was when I dropped Funke and, you know, the song popped. I had David, I had Mayoko on the song. And after dropping Funke and my life, my, my career still went down, I'm like, oh. 
am I ever going to rise again? Like, <laughs> this is like Crazy. one of the biggest platform that I can ever get. You and know, and I, get it, get in a collaboration with David Doe. It's like you, that's like magic. Yeah. You know, everybody expects to, to work that kind of magic. Exactly. Which he always does. Yeah, it did. I mean, I popped, but I mean, I just came down because there was no structure. There was yeah. no, there was nothing. I, I took a loan from the bank to, to, to finance that particular record Crazy. while I was still signed to Upfront and Personal. Crazy. You know? And then so when that, um, that period passed, I now had to start paying for the loan. You know, and that was really, I mean, okay. something difficult. Crazy. So I paid for like three years. Crazy. I'm bank. When did you When did you start paying? Because you know, <laughs> banks always come for you any day. Yeah, I mean, I was I was eating my buy in my house one day, and then I got a knock on the door. This bank office officials, you know, you never pay our money for two months now. It's in the Apple bro. Crazy. <laughs> you know, so um, yeah, Good. but. It's all stories now. It's crazy. And that's the thing, you know, nobody really knows these things. Man. Because, you know, music these days is like, and this is the honest truth for all people who want to put money in it. It's great. Mm. But you have to believe in what you're putting money on. Exactly. Because um, don't expect the thing that you're putting money in the basket. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as you know there's a great talent. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also feel from the from the investor's perspective is they feel like, oh, you know, sometimes you might put money, they grow up and they move. You know, that's mm -hmm. always the mm -hmm. that's always the trend. Mm -hmm. Would you ever sign a record deal after this? Nah, I don't need it. Like, I, I don't think I need a record deal right now. I'm, I mean, I'm signed to an international label, but yeah. not that kind of deal. Not like yeah. kind of that kind of 360 deal that I would be, you know, so. So this one is basically going to be publishing or, yeah, licensing, you know, licensing and all that. Yeah, no proper record label. Like, uh, nah, I won't do that. Like, so I, have, you, you, I float my own label. Oh, that's cool. You know, so I don't need to sign. So if you sign, if you, if you get to sign somebody else, what are you going to do differently? Um, I've learned from my experience and I just want it to be about the music for the person. I yeah. just want to push the music. Mm -hmm. Immediately you get signed to me. The first thing I want to do is to get you out there, make you make I mean make you pop, you know. I I, I want to make sure that I'm dedicated to everything that concerns you. You know, because it's business. A lot of record label owners sees you as the artist as their boy like i'm helping you you're not helping the artist like you're 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 you're, you're signing this artist to make profit you know so if it doesn't pop you ain't gonna make nothing you know so you better put in that money and see it as business you know not like in fact they send artists good they give and play go buy beans come why was that was that your own case no <laughs> <laughs> we just like to be honest here right <laughs> no no that never happened polo was super nice Trust me, I'm not even lying. Yeah. Are you happy now? I'm very much happy. I'm very much happy. And that's one of the things that you find in God. Happiness. Mm. You know, deep happiness. Like some, it, it, it's just original, organic. Yeah. You know, you have peace of mind. You know, so if, if I'd done it the wrong way, I'd probably be, you know, stressed right now, you know. But right now, I'm super happy. Yeah. You talk about God a lot on your songs. It's very spiritual and um, discerning. Let me put it that way. Mm. Would, would I ever catch you singing about booty and stuff like that? Not now. No, no, <laughs> you're not, 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 you're not, not, not in you're the not? future. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I would never catch you doing that for now. You won't. You won't. You won't. Is that deliberate? Are you very intentional about that? Yeah, I'm very okay. intentional. Like, I, I make love music. Oh. I mean, I, I sing love music. I sing conscious music, but yeah. not booty. No, I mean, I don't do okay. all those things. Okay. Now, do you, if you're going to write a song for anyone now, right, what is the process like? Because before when you probably write a song, I say, okay, let me just write the song. Mm -hmm. And maybe you probably don't get credit for it. There's a lot of songs you hear that people don't even know you wrote that song, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you write a song for anybody now, what is the process? You charge for songwriting now. Yeah, most definitely. Um, first off, you would have to sign papers and um, I get my royalties and um, you have to do everything necessary. Okay. You know, and then acknowledge me. It's not, in, you know, it's not be like those days where you say you go write for person. They say you go go talk to and write them. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so I mean. Who are we reading songs for? No, that nah, nah, I wouldn't do that. So let me ask you a question. If you write a song for some 
Now this is the process. Yeah. If I pay you okay. to write a song for me. Uh, all right. And uh, because you know we we know what we call the ghostwriters. Mm -hmm. Do I is there a case where we you get paid off and then you don't you don't mention anything about it? Yeah, that happens too. Okay. I mean that happens. Like you get payment and then you don't have to disclose your I mean, you don't have to disclose that, oh, I wrote this song. You know, that happens. But um, is it a bad thing for me to know someone wrote a song for me is not a bad it's not, thing. I mean, look outside the country. Look, look out outside Africa. People, writers are acknowledged and they're paid heavily. You know, so I think that we need to change the narrative here too. We need to start paying more attention to writers and giving them their credits. That's what I mean. But have you ever written a song for anyone and they they claim it's theirs and said you didn't write it? No, no. I just hear about it. You know, I don't work with stupid people. <laughs> that came sensible. from the heart. Ah, so I think So the thing is, but you know that happens a lot. Yeah, when you write yeah. songs and they tell you no, you didn't yeah. or they just claim and say, I've seen cases where people write their song as the executive producer, you didn't make the beat. Or you say, Oh, you know, producer to put your name, songwriter to put your name, and they didn't even produce the beat, they didn't write the song. Most times they didn't even pay for it. You know, so and uh, it, it's it's amazing how people will do such. <laughs> wow, <laughs> it's quite amazing, you know. But not with me though. I've never experienced such. Yeah, and I don't pray to. But I mean, um, songwriting is another business on its own. Yeah, it's just that people don't really. <laughs> so yeah. you know, like how many songs have you written for people? In total, that like you can remember. I never really paid attention to the numbers, but I mean, I've done a, a, quite a number of songs, so quite a number. Should be over 20. Wow. Yeah. Any hit song in there? Tons? Most definitely. I'm trying to get in your brain there. Never mind. I'm trying to get in your head. So, <laughs> most definitely. Yeah. So, um, but who are you going to write a song for free now? You just say, you know, because of this guy, I'll write a song for free. I would write a song for David. For free, free, right? And I'll do for Tiwa too. Hmm. Nah. So, anybody else? And why is it because they showed you love? Yeah. You know, it's hard to it's hard to get love. It's hard to get support in this industry when you're when it seems like you're you've not gotten there. You know, so David has always been there. You know, so he would call you up. Oh, what's happening? What's good? Let's do this. Let's do that. And all this. So I would. I mean, I think at the point we had an arrangement like that. Okay. You know, and that's good. Who would you never write a song for? Um, not because I, I have an issue with him, but because we our, our, our paths just don't cross. Like our kind of music don't align. Who? Uh, the portable, I guess. <laughs> You're never gonna write a song for uh, nah, portable. Nah, it can't work. Cause really. But it, it, it wouldn't even be able to deliver Wow. the kind of music that I would write for him. Wow. Because it's not his style. <laughs> so it's basically because of style or because you think, do you think it's good enough? Yeah, I think Portable is good though, funny enough. I think it's good. I mean, it's intentional when people do the kind of music that Portable does. I mean, I, I, it's pretty much intentional. People do it intentionally. You know, someone walked up to me and said, come. If you know if you do if you want to if you want to make it you have to be at the extreme side. You yeah. know, so if you want to do good music, do it, let it be good. And if you okay. want to do whack music, let it be really whack. Okay. You know, so so you which can... does he do good? <laughs> which do you think is best thing? <laughs> so, Doing great music and it's good or his good whack? Which one? <laughs> He's doing good music. Good music, okay. <laughs> yeah, good okay, music. Okay, so would you rather say that? You you think you might make write a song and you think you might not get he might not deliver it the way you want it, or just because you think he's you or you think your writing style does not fit his type of music. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Like my writing style is different, you know, from what I, and I think Portable can actually even do it. Trust me, I've listened to his songs that I'm like Portable, Portable did this. You know, so he's I mean. So if he pays you any amount of money, like what pays you your check, you drop your check. And tell you write a song for you, you will not write it. I turned down um, writing jobs. Okay. If you can't deliver, I, I turn it down. I mean, my manager knows that I've turned down a bunch lately. You know, because I look at, I, I mean, who wrote this song for you, Spiral, and the song is not great. I mean, it affects my brand. 
but I, I don't know. I, portable is good. I've listened to two sound from Portable and I feel like this guy is great. You okay. Know, he's just probably giving us wala for, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, intentionally. I, I mean. Okay, I get, I get it. I get it. I mean, I like your honesty. Um, and that's the thing. Sometimes we don't come out of our shells when doing interviews like this. Mm. It's not a big deal. Just say it the way it is. Right? Now, what's next for you, bro? What's going on with you this um, year? Because I know definitely there'll, there'll probably be an album on an EP dropping this year. That's guaranteed. Yeah, most definitely. So, are you in the category of people that, oh, I'm all by myself? Because you know now people say, ah, I'm doing my own EP. I'm not to feature anybody. Or you're in the category, oh, you know what? I'm going to make an EP, but I'm going to feature other guys. Oh, yeah. I'm going to work with people because um, what collaboration does for you is that it exposes you to more audience. Mm -hmm. You know, funny enough, I would have considered working with Portable, you know, because I need this guy got numbers, you know, he has his audience. And so if I want to be, you know, if I want to assess some kind of audience i would have i would need portable you know and if i want to assess some other kind of audience you know i would need the likes of um tiwa savage the davidos you know there are some places you get into that portable owns the the i mean yeah but where's your head now where's my head you know who i want to work with okay i would love to work with first of all one Hmm. I think that that's going to work magic. Yeah. So, you know, let's just create our quick playlist now. Five songs, Spiral featuring who? Juan de Cole. Okay. Um, locally or inter internationally? Anybody. Uh, Juan de Cole. Wiz. Okay. Um, Aria Star. Okay. Um, you have two more. I would do, I would do Banky. Banky W. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'll do Banky. Okay. okay. And then I'll do Breezy, Chris Brown. Chris Breezy, right? I think you can make a record with Nathaniel Bassi. Talk <laughs> I mean, uh, that'll, be, that'll be out of this world. Thank yeah. you, Spider, for coming on the yeah, show. Thanks, I had a great thanks, time with you. Real me. talk. Your manager was already cringing. Uh -huh. Keep up, everybody. Let's do boom, boom. Boom, boom, I'm on drop. Let me show you how I buy anybody, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the show, Spiral, thanks, right? Thanks I'm happy for, for you. Me. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you for the growth. Thank you for your direction, how much you've taken this. Thank you for not giving up. Thank you. Um, I mean, I'm grateful for that. Um, as much as it is, um, for everybody believed in it, I think it's more. Mm. because you're a great songwriter you're thank a great you. musician as well thank you and i love the confidence sometimes thank i like you. the i like the cocky spiral that's nice <laughs> <laughs> you've always been playing it safe you know that right yeah nah bro <laughs> thank you so much right getting Thanks back to the show me. if you missed this interview you can check it out